Without music, life would be a mistake. We could therefore call the world the embodiment of music just as much as the embodiment of the will. If I now with only one predicate would designate this lyricism, I would have to say it sounds. And through thus I have come back to the spirit of sensuality, is the one who appears as immediately musically. Is music the highest form of art? Well, at least to some philosophers it is. But how can you even distinguish music from other art forms such as painting, literature and sculpting? This will be the subject of today's episode of Sound and Sophia. I've already touched upon this subject a little bit in both the episodes on Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. But let's dig a little bit deeper. And also, I want to add, uh, since I'm a musician myself, and I'm a little bit biased here, but who cares? Let's begin with Søren Kierkegaard's view of music. A big part of his book, Either Or, goes into a deep analyzation of Mozart's Don Giovanni and why it should be considered the pinnacle of all aesthetic achievement ever attained. In order for us to truly understand why Kierkegaard thought music should be considered the highest form of art, we need to fully understand his life spheres or life stages. I know, I know, I've talked extensively about the spheres on this show, but here's a really quick summary. Every person is dwelling in one of these spheres, either the aesthetic sphere, the ethical sphere, or the religious sphere. The easiest way to explain them is their corresponding relationship towards time. A person dwelling in the aesthetic sphere is only living in the instant moment. So he is only searching for kicks with alcohol, sex and music. A person dwelling in the ethical sphere have realized that there is a future to look forward to, in which case he tries to live ethically. And a person dwelling in the religious sphere have realized that there is an eternity to relate to, in which case he have to relate to God and live a pious life. So the person who dwells within the aesthetic sphere is only living within the instantaneous moment. And which art form does that as well? Exactly, music. Music is dependent upon the instantaneous moment. If you would stop time completely, music would be unconsumable. You would still be able to enjoy a beautiful painting or a sculpture, but music, you would never be able to hear the music without time. Therefore, music is the highest form of art in the aesthetic sphere. And this is why Mozart's Don Giovanni should be considered the pinnacle of aesthetic achievement because it combines music, the highest form of art, and sex, the most pleasurable sensation in the instantaneous moment. The most abstract idea conceivable is the spirit of sensuality, but in what medium can it be represented? Only in music. It cannot be represented in sculpture, for in itself it is a kind of quality of inwardness. It cannot be painted, for it cannot be grasped in fixed contours. It is an energy, a storm, impatience, passion, and so on. In all their lyrical quality, 
existing not in a single moment, but in a succession of moments. For if it existed in a single moment, it could be portrayed or painted. Its existing in a succession of moments indicates its epic character, yet in a stricter sense it is not an epic, for it has not reached the level of words, it moves constantly in an immediacy, nor can it be represented, therefore, in poetry. The only medium that can represent it is music. Let's move on to Nietzsche. At first I want to add that this might actually be more of my own idea, but all in line with Nietzsche's philosophy. And in order for us to understand this, we need to talk about the ancient Greek tragedy. In ancient Greece, before the time of Socrates, which whom ruined the Western world according to Nietzsche, there was an annual three-day festival in praise of the god Dionysus. Everything began with an improvised piece of music and a dance called a dithyramb, and then the tragic place would take place. Why the Greek tragedy is so important for Nietzsche is because to him it celebrates and acknowledge what life actually is, painful and tragical. We're born, we become conscious of our own impending doom, yet we find deep meaning in this suffering. Life is still worth living, even though it is tragical. So how does this relate to music then? Well, to me, music, much like the ancient Greek tragedy, is more analogous to life than any other art form. Let me elaborate. A musical piece can begin with a single note. It is born and then it grows up and becomes a melody. Maybe this melody meets up with somebody else. Together they create harmony. But we know that music has its inevitable death. Yet with this knowledge it powers on. Arise and a fall towards death. Maybe this is why we find glorious meaning in music, because it reflects our mortality as humans. A musical piece is born and it lives on towards its inevitable end just like us humans. This is why I believe that music should be considered the highest form of art. So music becomes the highest form of art, for it resembles life's tragic element in a way that a painting just can't. A painting never dies, unless it's destroyed of course, but I think you catch my drift. Birth, life and death is an essential element of music. Whenever a piece of music is played, it travels through the stages of life. As if through music, he was able to see the motions of the will, the conflict of motives, the swelling current of passions, clearly visible before him like the wealth of vividly moving lines and figures, and thus 
plunge into the most delicate mysteries of the unconscious. Another philosopher who also loved music was the philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, who also influenced Nietzsche a great deal. And he also loved music, but for another reason. For Schopenhauer, our perception of the world is distinctly different from how the world actually is. The thing in itself exclusive to our human senses. We cannot have knowledge about the world as it is. We're only experiencing a representation or an illusion of what the world actually is. So when one composes a painting or writes a book, one is only making an illusion of the illusion. Let me elaborate. Here you can see the world, and to Schopenhauer, this world is only how we experience the world. It's not the world exclusive to our senses, which means that this world is only but an illusion of the real world. So if I would make a painting of the world, the painting is only but a copy of the world which is an illusion. So the painting is but a copy of an illusion, or an illusion of an illusion. This is not the case with music. Music is not a copy of a representation of the world. It is the phenomena itself. Here Schopenhauer writes in his book, The World as Will and Representation. For music is, as mentioned, different from all other arts in this sense. It is not a portrayal of appearances, or more correctly, the adequate objectification of the will, but the immediate portrayal of the will itself, as well as the metaphysical complement of all physical things in the world and the thing in itself of all appearances. We could, therefore, call the world the embodiment of music just as much as the embodiment of the will. So for Schopenhauer, music is the embodiment of the will. What did he mean by this? Well, let me elaborate a little bit. If you have complete silence, there is no such thing as a will in the music. But the moment I play one note, it sort of wants to go somewhere. For instance, if I play a major scale. Here, you can really hear it wills to go upwards. And if I descend the major scale, scale as well. You can really feel the tension. And I believe this is what Schopenhauer meant. Because even though it's just frequencies in the air, we can sort of hear the will that it wants to go to places. This is why music should be considered the highest form of art. Because it reflects the deepest urge in the universe. I would like to add another thing from myself. Since I'm a jazz musician, I would actually say that improvisation makes music even greater of an art. Take Nietzsche for example, who praised the dithyramb in ancient Greece, which was improvised. And in the aesthetic sphere in Kierkegaard's philosophy, the instantaneous moment is the important factor. Shouldn't then music that is created in the instant moment be the best? 
Sorry, Mozart. Miles Davis just took your place. Oh well. Uh, if you liked any of the music, by the way, in this episode, it was all produced by me and my trio. So if, if you like any of it, please subscribe to the Sound and Sofia Records channel. But that's it for today, everyone. Take care until the next one.